This is BlueAndGold.com recruiting insider Mike Singer checking in at the BlueAndGold.com YouTube page. And I am joined by our senior editor, Lou Samoji. And Lou, we're going to talk about uh, spring balls practice, uh, starts tomorrow. Um, and uh, the let, let's talk quarterbacks. That's always a hot topic, even though oh, oh. He, people are interested in that. <laughs> I mean, Ian Book has got one of the safest job securities coming into the spring, probably in the country. i got to say he's top five with his experience and then the guys behind him. What are you expecting from the quarterback position as we enter tomorrow's spring practice? Well, he's really going to have to take on a major leadership role because the running back and receiver positions are kind of in a state of flux. You lose your top targets with Chase Claypool and Cole Komet and Chris Fink. The running back position, you lost Tony Jones, your leading rusher, and there's so much uncertainty around the group there. Jafar Armstrong has been injury prone the first couple of years, and then just a lot of question marks beyond that. So... There's just going to be so much resting on both the quarterback and the offensive line, which returns 114 career starts. Uh, to my, but the research I've done, that's the most ever returning along an offensive line in Notre Dame history. So they're going to be leaning on those two uh, areas a lot to really help bring up the rest of the offense. There's there's plenty of talent and raw potential there, but the leadership has to come from the quarterback and offensive line groups. The backup quarterback spot is always one of the most popular. People always want to talk about the backup. So for in, in terms of Brendan Clark and Drew Pine, the freshman coming in, um, probably not going to see a ton of them in terms of first-team reps, but what, what do you think uh, is the expectations for those two guys in spring practice? Well, they... You know, with Brendan Clark, it's hopefully being able to establish himself as the number two player because of the experience he was able to draw upon last year through all the practices, although most of them were really on scout team. Now, Drew Pine, he, it's uh, important that he was able to come in with the transfer of Phil Dracovic because now you have three scholarship quarterbacks on there and you have competition for that number two spot. He's the first guy since Malik Zaire in 2013 to enroll early, and it was needed right now because of the l- lack of numbers there. That that should be an open position. I, I would think Brendan Clark, just because he has been around the program and been around Tommy Reese for a full fall, summer, et cetera, that he would have the edge going in. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how that competition uh, settles out. I, I'm going to guess that after the uh, spring, Ryan Kelly says, oh, it, it's still wide open for the number two spot just to keep both of them engaged. And Mike, let's face it. I mean, the days of four scholarship quarterbacks on a roster, I think those may be forever gone. Right. Uh, everybody is now looking at a Joe Burrow, uh, 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 you know, a Jalen Hurts going to Oklahoma. Baker Mayfield was a transfer. Kyler Murray, etc. And they're always going to be thinking, maybe like a Phil, that that could be me. I'm not going to wait. And you know, when Ian graduates next year, you're going to have Drew Pine, you're going to have Brendan Clark, and you're going to have Tyler Buckner. And I don't see all three saying the guy who ends up number three, I probably is going to transfer. So it's important just for one of the two now to be able to get some footing into that number two spot now and be the heir apparent to Ian Book. Thank you so much for watching this video from blueandgold.com. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and go to blueandgold.com for the latest Notre Dame football and recruiting information.